the enemy has emerged from the castle and has formed defensive ranks. Why would they come out? It is the height of idiocy. Sure, you must act as a decoy and attack from the south. Zhao, once the enemy reacts to Shur's attack, you must strike from the rear. This man, he rebels against Wei and strikes out on his own. And yet he is nothing but a mere fool! This battle is an insult to us all. End it! Please, have mercy. I surrender. The fact that you instigated a revolt is not such a great crime. Your greatest crime was having the temerity to think you had the talent to do so. You, who were unaware of your own mediocrity, die. What a miserable world this is, where we are forced to watch while idiots erupt in hysterics. Meanwhile, my own talents are destined to be wasted. The cunning of Suma Yi managed to eliminate Gong Sun Yuan. Not knowing the limits of his strength, he had turned his back on Wei and declared himself the King of Yan. Unable to control his anger towards this fool, Suma Yi was reminded of another man. The unparalleled tactician that had fallen at the Wujang Plains, Zhuge Liang. Once his star had faded, the land had changed dramatically. Within Wei, Cao Rei succeeded Cao Pi as emperor and began a rule of greed and opulence. While within Wu, they watched the struggle between Wei and Shu as they stabilized their own country and strengthened their defenses. Meanwhile, determined to rebuild its strength, Shu remained quiet as it recovered. It was then that Cao Rei of Wei died and was replaced by the young Cao Feng. Supporting Cao Feng were the Wei general Cao Shuang and none other than Suma Yi. However, Suma Yi willingly gave up his authority and decided to retire instead. For he felt that dividing power between two people would only lead to chaos within the government. In addition, with Zhuge Liang gone, there were none who could match his intellect. Realizing this fact during his battle against Gong Sun Yuan, he later disappeared from the public eye. And so, as the lone authority of Wei, Cao Shuang moved to attack Shu in the hope of returning Wei to its former glory. Suma Yi refused to participate in this battle and dispatched his son, Suma Zhao, in his stead. It was a sign of how much he missed having a worthy opponent. ambush troops here but that means these supplies <sighs> it's a little dark for map reading isn't it who are you again my name is Dung Ai my lord I have had the honor of speaking with your father on several occasions <laughs> is that right I have something I wish to discuss with you, my lord.
the night rain, the tenacious waves of attack. I'd say they have quite the strategist leading them. That would be me. And I'm here to claim your head. like we got away clean in the end. But the general may prove a problem. I suppose I should go and report on what happened to my father. Most impressive, my lord. You reminded me of your father out there today. What? Come on. Don't say things like that. Right. Let's move on out of here. He defeats the enemy with assured decision-making and retreats by the safest route. It seems the Suma family is the only one that can reunite Wei. Everybody demanded the return of the cunning strategist they had known. The army led by Cao Shuang to defeat Xu was unable to achieve any results. And Cao Shuang's reputation as a military commander was dealt a crushing blow. On the other hand, Suma Zhao's skillful retreat helped further the Suma clan's reputation as brilliant strategists. Cao Shuang was convinced that military action could not restore Wei to its former brilliance. And so he held a feast at the palace that lasted for several days. With this lavish banquet, he hoped to gain influence and power by winning over the hearts of the leaders and governing officials. However, his opulence began to put a strain on the coffers and accomplished little but to drain the country of its resources. Just then, word arrived that Zhang Wei of Shu was preparing to invade Wei. The only way to meet this threat would be to depose Cao Shuang and replace him with Suma Yi. Oblivious to these calls from the people throughout his country, Cao Shuang continued to hold his feasts. As the misguided rule of Cao Shuang continued, Suma Yi sequestered himself in a mansion within Luoyang and refused to come out. However, there was a distinct gleam in his eyes, like that of a wolf stalking its prey. This was the beginning of a coup d'etat, a natural move for one of such cunning intellect as he. Too ill even to meet with me? Yes. Recently, he's begun to forget things. Frankly, I don't think he'll ever recover. Please give my regards to the General. By the way, where is the General right now? Yes. I believe he is out on a hunt today. Now, if you will please excuse me. Come, my son. Cao Shuang must be dealt with. I am not generous enough to allow such a fool to do as he pleases. Oh, my drinking, hunting, carousing! It is all for the future of Wei! 
You understand? I have to be seen as a strong leader! What I understand is that you have proven yourself to be a most unworthy leader. For the future of Wei, I must eliminate such an incompetent ruler. I was right to do what I did. Know your place! Our men were coming together as one under me. His Highness knew that! <laughs> you imbecile! If you thought your conduct was unimpeachable, then why were you spying on me? You feared me. Because you knew you were wrong, right? You blind, misguided fool. Kill him. Suma Yi could not forgive Cao Shuang. He was a fool that cared only about what others thought of him, who let his insecurities drive him down the path of indecision. With Cao Shuang out of the way, authority over Wei fell to Suma Yi. Fearing for his life, Xiao Ba, a relative of Cao Shuang's, decided to plot an escape. Learning of his intentions, Suma Yi made his way to the castle where Xiao Ba was stationed. Xiao Ba will be heading for Shu. You don't wish us to give chase? No. The Shahu clan's achievements are well known. Killing him will bring unnecessary trouble. He sides with his father's killers ah, to save his own hide. <laughs> ah, I couldn't do it. Fleeing to Shu, Shaho Ba was made a general in their army. The events following Cao Shuang's execution unnerved the leaders of Wei. Indeed, Suma Yi, now the sole authority over all of Wei, also sensed something unusual going on. However, he was too busy to do anything about it. Carrying on the will of the late Zhuge Liang, Jiang Wei of Shu had resumed the invasion of Wei. Suma Yi sent his sons, Suma Shi and Suma Zhao, to go and deal with this threat. As they looked upon the Shu army at Mount Neoto, the sagacious young men thought to themselves, why would father not participate in this battle? Why did he send us instead? These two brilliant young minds could not help but question their great father's choice. Would they find the answers they sought in this battle? Give it up. You will. Never be able to beat me. <laughs> Maybe he could if he had a little help. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
just in time. My lord, take care. Zhang Wei and the traitor are here. Somebody go and inform our lord at once. Come on, we've lost this one. There's no point in sticking around here. They know when they are beaten. I... I swore... to my lord... that I would never give up until we had built a land of benevolence! It's all right. It's okay. Did you see that? That tenacity? Our father has left us with a few issues left to solve. <sighs> Why must people cling to their outdated ideals so stubbornly? In the battle fought among the new generation of heroes from each kingdom, Suma Shur emerged victorious. However, the Suma clan was not given time to rest on their laurels. For at that very moment, a secret conspiracy was being plotted that would shake the kingdom to its very core. The Emperor of Wei, Cao Fang, was deposed. It was the result of a devious plot cooked up by Wang Ling following his attack on Wu. His aim was to depose the young emperor and replace him with an older one in order to reduce the Suma clan's influence within the court. Suma Yi's decision was swift. He quickly prepared his troops and set out to strike Wang Ling, who resided in Shouchun. Unlike Shu and their repeated invasions, Wu had spent the past few years quietly building their strength and they now hungrily awaited an opportunity to invade Wei. Of course, Suma Yi was too clever to allow Wu an opening. Though he knew that none could match his intellect and cunning, he decided to trust his instincts and quickly set off to eliminate his foes. Wang Ling was slain, and the Wu forces had no choice but to retreat. Suma Yi's influence increased greatly, and the Kingdom of Wei largely fell under his control. And just as quickly as he seized power, Suma Yi took ill. He had been hiding his poor health for years, despite participating in countless battles. Enemies, allies, even his own family, he had fooled them all. It was a fitting end to one of the most cunning intellectuals the land had ever known. Come to think of it, the last few years have been spent consolidating our rule. What's more, father has moved with an uncharacteristic sense of haste. He had us both fooled all along. <laughs> My time here is done. My son, you must lead in my place. Use it as you see fit. You are just leaving it all to me. Well, if I know you at all, you're excited by the prospect. I won't deny it. There is none more qualified than myself to lead way into the future. <laughs> Just make sure that you walk the right path.
cunning strategist Sumo Yi passed away. Control of Wei fell to his eldest son, Sumo Shur. The firm foundation of rules set by the Sumo clan served to bring stability to the region. The winds of chaos that had swept the kingdom for years finally died down, and a peaceful quiet returned. However, the lands to the south were soon shaken by a new tragedy. In Wu, Sun Quan, the last of the Three Kingdoms era rulers, passed away due to illness. The Wu Chancellor, Lu Xuan, died as well, and unrest began spreading throughout the land. The time had arrived. When Sumo Shur learned that Sun Quan's successor was a young, inexperienced boy, he decided to launch a military campaign against Wu. Commanding the forces was his younger brother, Sumo Zhao, as well as Zhuge Dan, among others. On their way to the Wu territory of Jianye, the Wei army engaged the enemy on the fields of Dongxing. People near and far watched earnestly as the first battle of the post Sumo Yi age unfolded before them. That day, the spirit of Zhuge Dan of Wei was without equal, soaring to the heavens. We will claim Dongxing and bury the Wu forces. Yes, yes sir. sir! For you, General, we would give our very lives. Hmm? Lord Sumo Zhao does not appreciate the gravity of the situation. He is so different to his cool, calculating brother. I must prepare for battle. Come, men! Victory is upon us! Follow me! Fong will keep this stronghold safe. Do you have something to say, my lord? By attacking two castles at once, we will weaken our position. What's more, the river may force us to split our forces. If you know that, then why not tell Jugadon? Uh, why bother? You should bother. It's what a ruler does. These soldiers are looking to you for guidance. This is why I hate having all this responsibility. All right, then. Thanks to the efforts of Sumo Zhao and his allies, the Wei army was able to avoid total annihilation. With the momentum on his side, the Wu general, Zhuge Ke, marched north from Dongxing. And he surrounded the new castle at Hefei where the Wei army had taken refuge. With their backs against the wall, Sumo Zhao and Zhuge Dan requested reinforcements from Sumo Shur. Leading a single unit, Sumo Shur broke through the Wu army's blockade and entered the castle. Once inside, he gathered up the shaken troops 
and prepared for a fight to the death against Wu. His superior intellect had been a source of pride even for his late father, the famed Suma Yi. Now was the time for him to show off the genius strategies that would drive history itself forward. This is all you have. Brother, I... Uh, sorry about that. Tell me, Zhao. What does it mean to you to hold high rank? What? Uh, well, actually, it means nothing. Then discard it. That will be the punishment for your failure. I will punish the Suma and let Yuga Dan off scot free. And this integrity will prove invaluable in building my machine. Brother, you. Father told me to use power as I see fit. I intend to aim for the top. The efforts of Sumashur at Hefei would sweep away the failure of his family's previous attacks on Wu. Further, Sumashur placed all of the blame for their defeat at Dongxing at the hands of his brother Suma Zhao. These actions won him the loyalty of many influential officers. As a result, the fame and influence of Sumashur managed to surpass that of even his legendary father. Wei belonged to Suma Shur now, and its emperor was nothing more than a figurehead. It was then that Zhang Wei led Shu to rise up once again and strike at Wei. For in the eyes of Zhang Wei, Wei was still a villainous entity that stood in the way of a world of virtue. Ambition. Virtue. Shu fought for ideals rather than the tangible. To Suma Shur and his quest to reach the pinnacle of power, there could be nothing more disdainful. Suma Shur dispatched Suma Zhao, Wu Guai, Deng Ai, and several of his best troops to Tian Shui. The hammer of the new conqueror was about to come crashing down on the pathetic Shu forces. Lord Deng Ai, I just wanted to say... <coughs> you cannot fight in this state. Lord Xiao Yuan did a lot for me in the past. But when he was killed, I was unable to repay that debt. So I have to keep Wei safe. It was the only thing he wanted. <coughs> For the future of Wei, your life must end here. You don't get it. It was Wei that tried to kill me. Or would you rather I say... I will kill you in the name of Shu. It pains me. Your father must be rolling in his grave. I don't think so. If I know my father, he'd be smiling. Come on, Borgoy. 
Do you really have it in you to kill me? That is the intention. Hard as it is. Then get on with it. What? I must say, that was a most unexpected turn of events. Shu, cannot afford to lose you. I will hold them off! Lord Guo Lord Huai! Lord Guo Huai! You're dead! Jiang Wei's tenacity led him to success in slaying Guo Huai, but was ineffective against Deng Ai. Having defeated Wu and Shu, Sumer Shur then turned his gaze toward domestic matters. He began to build his own military strength within Wei. Against him stood those that remained loyal to the Wei name. With him stood a new faction of those who supported his rule. The antagonism between them was almost palpable and worsened by the day. Around that time, Sumer Zhao heard rumors of a plot to assassinate his brother. He hurriedly made his way to the court to warn his brother. There, he saw something shocking. He saw Sumer Shur taking a leisurely stroll all by himself, completely unconcerned. Brother! There are rumblings of discontent afoot. You should not walk alone. But you won't bother to stop me. What? If they want to attack me, so be it. Right now, I am the only man fit to rule this land. But if there is one who can defeat me, I will gladly hand over the reins. My lord, he is putting the fate of Wei in the balance. He is killed. Wei will rule the land. But if not, he will destroy Wei and rule himself. And yet he is so calm. He frightens me. This is all you have. Huh? Huh? <gasps> ah, brother! I am still alive. <laughs> Excellent. This land is mine to unite. The Mandate of Heaven is with me. Having survived the assassination attempt, Sumer Shur began searching for the source of the conspiracy. He traced the lines that connected the officers who remained loyal to Wei and despised the rule of the Sumer clan. 
it all came back to the Emperor of Wei, Cao Feng. In response, Sumer Shi deposed Cao Feng and immediately replaced him with Cao Mao. This hurried political maneuvering gave birth to more cries of outrage. Guan Xiu Jian, Wen Qin, and other officers loyal to Wei began to raise troops in Shouquan. They rose in rebellion against Sumer Shi. This would be the last struggle of Wei, the final throes of a dying kingdom. Determined to bring an end to Wei himself, Sumer Shi marched toward Shouquan. It was then that Sumer Shi could see it clearly. He could see the summit of his quest for power and the fate that had been promised to him. Usurper, you will be done. <laughs> 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 Now, Wen Young. My lord, are you all right? Shochu and Castle is ours. Leave the rest to me. Come, if you have what it takes to kill me. Even with supreme power, there are some things that cannot be controlled. The enemy's ingrained loyalty, you mean? That... and fate. My lord! The land just barely slipped from the grasp of Sumer Shi. For after quashing the rebellion led by Guan Xiu Jian and Wen Qin, Sumer Shi collapsed in the middle of the camp. And just like that, the ambition and intellect of this talented leader were extinguished. Fate had snatched him from this world just when his star shined brightest. Brother, you fool. I thought I told you to defend Lu Yang. <sighs> Thank you for coming. Wounded by Wei's hatred. My wound has been further gouged by their tenacity. It's all such a waste. You must lead in my place, brother. Use it as you see fit. <sighs> You're just leaving it all to me. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> Following Suma Shi's death, power was transferred to his younger brother, Suma Zhao. During this transition, the remaining Wei loyalists used the opportunity to seek their revenge. The Emperor of Wei, Cao Mao, demanded that Sumer Zhao remain within Xuchang. It was part of a plan to strip Sumer Zhao of his authority over the military. Surprisingly, Sumer Zhao obeyed the command and remained within the city. 
for he was not yet ready to take on the duties and obligations of a ruler. Now that Wei had seized authority, Xu would surely move as well. Having learned of Su Mishur's death, Jiang Wei decided to undertake yet another invasion. Hearing this news, Deng Ai, Zhang Wei, and their allies yearned for Sumo Zhao to again take the reins. For only with the help of the Sumo clan had Wei ever managed to successfully repel an invading Shu army. Even the Emperor of Wei was unable to ignore this fact, and he allowed Sumo Zhao to return to Luoyang. Released from confinement, Sumo Zhao immediately set out with his troops to meet Jiang Wei's forces at Tao Shui. At last, he was finally prepared to deal with the expectations that his father, brother, and his allies had placed upon him. That's that, then. You were most magnificent out there, my lord. Not that we'd expect anything less. Hmm. Lord Sumachao! Hooray! Lord Sumachao! Hooray! My lord, you have earned this trust. And now, there is no one else for you to lean on anymore. <sighs> I know. I'm ready. But you'll have to let me complain sometimes. Isn't there something else you should say first? His power restored, Sumo Zhao repelled the attacking Shu army in an impressive display of strength. Gone was the Sumo Zhao who constantly depended on the assistance of his father and brother. In his place stood an ambitious young man who was ready to assume the mantle of leadership necessary to conquer the land. Meanwhile, the Emperor of Wei, Cao Mao, secretly approached Zhuge Dan at Shou Chuin. Having connections to Wu, Zhuge Dan kept his distance from the other officers who kowtowed to Sumo Zhao. Further, the animosity between the two left over from the Dongxing incident still remained unhealed. Cao Mao used their ill will to attempt to lure Zhuge Dan to his side. He told them that there could be no better guardian of the Wei Kingdom. Behind Sumo Zhao's brilliant glow, there lurked a dark hatred for Wei. As tension gripped the land, Jiang Wei made his move. This new Shu invasion came unusually quickly after its previous attempt. Realizing that the enemy must be unprepared, Sumo Zhao sent Zhang Hui and Deng Ai to deal with the threat. And so Shu attacked, ignoring their lack of strength, struggling forth, fueled only by the dying wishes of their long-departed allies. Were they not still the common fools that had been so detested by Sumo Zhao's father and brother? As Zhong Hui and the others headed for Duanggu, Sumo Zhao began to realize. He could see at last who was the real enemy that corrupted the land. Our Lord has ordered us to observe the enemy. I will go and take a look. Wait just a minute. You're trying to steal all the glory, aren't you? It never crossed my mind, my lord. Then you won't mind if I go. Thank you.
finish them. Grind them into the dust. That's odd. Where's Jiang Wei? My lord, Jiang Wei's forces have been spotted. Lord Jiang Wei is in danger. So you saw me coming. However, my ambition will not be so easily stopped. Defeated soundly at the hands of Deng Ai and Zhang Hui, the Shu army was forced to retreat from Duan Gu. It would clearly take Shu some time before they were ready to plot another invasion. However, troubles continued both inside and outside the kingdom. Just as the external threats began to subside, Zhuge Dan began showing signs of restlessness. He had been offering the people of Shouchun gifts to gain their loyalty. In addition, he treated his officers with uncommon kindness, and their respect for him continued to grow. Throughout Shouchun, there were numerous voices calling for Juga Dan to rule the land. And so, tensions between Suma Zhao and Juga Dan reached their peak. Then, the Wei Emperor, Cao Mao, decided to appoint Juga Dan to a position within his court. He ordered Suma Zhao to summon Juga Dan to attend the appointment ceremony. Suma Zhao obeyed Cao Mao's request and sent for Zhuge Dan to come to the capital. Convinced that this was a plot to assassinate him, Zhuge Dan instead started a rebellion at Shouchun. Left with no other choice, Suma Zhao led a unit to go suppress the uprising. He could feel it, the hatred that roiled beneath the surface of this battle. They've allied themselves with Wu. They're coming from the south. Wen Qin defected to Wu, and he's in here. A little close for a scouting mission. Zhuge Dan. What? Uh, is it? Uh, you? What? You know what I want. You have ignored the Emperor and usurped power. I want you dead. And once I'm dead, what will you do? I... I will rebuild Wei under the Emperor. If you wish to rebuild Wei, then why are you fighting alongside Wu? I... You... Shut him up! <laughs> Look at him. He's lost sight of what it is that he's fighting for. It seems like there are too many like him. No clear goal. No understanding of his capabilities! He must die! The reinforcements from Wu are not enough to break the siege. We must conserve supplies and release all non-personnel from within the castle. You would actually be so cruel as to hand over our loyal followers to those monsters? Suma Zhao has shown mercy to those who surrender. 
It is you who are hurting our people by starving them. Silence! You have lost your grip! Suma Chao has proven the greater man! Silence! I... I fought for Wei! I fought for our people! If you meant to help Wei, then you should have understood your limits. It is a grave crime to misjudge yourself, and to lose sight of your goal. You must be punished for that. Curse you! At last, Suma Zhao had rid himself of indecision. After suppressing Juga Dan's rebellion, Suma Zhao returned to Luoyang and calmly prepared for his next move. He wrested all authority away from the Wei Emperor, Cao Mao. It was not out of resentment for the time he had been sequestered in Xuchang. And it was not because Cao Mao had orchestrated Juga Dan's rebellion. He had simply decided to accept the responsibility of uniting the land and bringing an end to the chaos. In the face of Suma Zhao's decisive actions, the last scraps of Wei's power were driven into a corner. And so, Cao Mao set out on one final gambit. Suma Zhao's intentions are now known to all in the land. I will not sit here and wait for death. I will kill him and reclaim Wei. Ground, traitor. <sighs> so this is the Emperor's answer. A pity. There were other roads you could have taken. I will have to live with the fact that I have killed the Emperor until the day I die. And history will record me as a killer. But I will take this responsibility, and I will see it through. Suma Zhao killed the Emperor of Wei, Cao Mao. However, Suma Zhao did not desire the throne for himself, and instead appointed Cao Huan as the new Emperor of Wei. Was it due to a sense of guilt for having killed Cao Mao? Or did he feel it inappropriate to take the throne after having perpetrated such treason? It would not be long before the people would learn the true intent behind his actions. Suma Zhao took Zhong Hui, Deng Ai, and his other men and advanced on Xu's stronghold of Yangping Gate. They would retaliate against the countless attacks they had suffered at the hands of Xu. They would put a stop to the meaningless strife brought by Xu, which had long ago lost its way and battled on merely out of habit. Suma Zhao would be the one to bring an end to the Age of the Three Kingdoms. This was how he would fulfill the promise he had made to the late Cao Mao.
Ba Shu is a natural fortress. It is surrounded on all sides by mountains, and the only road is well defended. All the more reason they will not expect us to come over the mountains. I will make for Yingping via the mountains, and from there to Chengdu. Then you had better hurry, hadn't you? If you take too long, I will go through Yangping Gate and take down Chengdu myself. I will do my best. We will meet again at Chengdu then. Ah, let us begin. Leave it to me. I will not lose to dullards bound by the words of the dead. I will finish everything here today. You're awfully quiet. Not what I'd expect from the leader of a fallen army. And you're not at all what I expected from a traitor to his kingdom. If anything, you have shown you possess the confidence and bearing of a true ruler. I wish we could have met earlier, my lord. We hereby surrender before you. Liu Shan is no fool after all. Shu still has resources to spare. It seems a little premature for them to surrender. That's why it is a good one. From just the smallest skirmish with us, he has seen he cannot win. He has realized his limitations and has chosen surrender. You see, he knows what he wants. We were not fighting Liu Bei or Zhuge Liang. Their leader is still very much alive. The long age of the Three Kingdoms finally came to an end at the hand of Sumajao. Zhao. Liu Shan chose to surrender, thus sparing the lives of his people. Afterward, he was relocated to the Wei capital and was named Duke of Anle. He was the defeated ruler of a dead nation, a disgrace to his father. He was showered with endless ridicule and jeers. But now that it was all over, he was finally able to smile. Feels good to know that Shu won't be giving us any more trouble. <laughs> hey, they'll hear you. <laughs> Here, drink up. Does it make you sad 
to think of your country? Not at all. In fact, I'm enjoying myself. There's no one around to tell me what to do anymore. No need to follow the dreams of the dead. Hmm? <laughs> Too true. Too true. Those who built the Three Kingdoms were too idealistic. We have been trapped by their dreams, and that has kept the war going. But, enough is enough. We must open our eyes. We are the new generation! Suma Zhao took the title King of Jin and began his preparations for a new age. However, Destiny had a different idea. He died a year later. His son, Suma Yan, forced the Emperor of Wei to abdicate thereby destroy the kingdom of Wei. Later, he himself became emperor. Over time, Wu underwent political upheavals and began to lose power. Fifteen years after the establishment of the Kingdom of Jin, Wu surrendered to Jin. No one can surpass me. Now I'm my rampage until this chaos comes to an end. Win, win, and win some I more. I live for the day this chaos comes to I an end. I cannot be defeated, for I fight to protect and create a justice back to this world, no matter what the cost. I devote to those I love and care my efforts will restore peace. My motivation lies in my pursuit for perfecting my life. I only hope that it will be on the field. My bow has never missed it. Nothing is like the way it was before today. We live in a world. I won't stop until I fulfill my duty. Thus, the three kingdoms of Cao Cao, Sun Quan, and Liu Bei were all eventually conquered under the rule of the Sun Clan.